Movies and TV shows, social media, and family stories about college have led to a series of myths or misconceptions that paint a picture of college that is far from reality. Myths and misconceptions may be keeping you from making the best decisions you can about your own future. Hi, I'm Margaret Meek, and here are 15 of the biggest myths about college. There are many myths about what college is and how your life will be lived while in the hallowed halls of your dream school. Here are some of the myths we hear most often. Let's start with the myth that there is no college for me. There are 4,000 colleges, community colleges, and trade schools in the United States. There is a school for you, and there is a college for any time that you want to start. Do the research, ask the questions, use the advice of your school counselor and the admissions officers. Get busy. There is also a misconception that there are specific colleges that you must attend to have a future. That isn't true. There is only the best school for you. Do your research on the colleges you wish to attend, apply, and select the one that is the best match for you. It is what you do with your education, willingness to work, and the ability to ask for assistance and support that makes a difference for your future. Now you think you want to go to college, but you've heard that only perfect students get into college. Not true. You don't have to have a sky high grade point average to get into college. Earning a B in a hard class may be better than earning an A in an easy course. When looking at your transcript, colleges look at your course selection, progress throughout high school, and your overall GPA. Let your transcript tell a story of your willingness to work hard. The same can be said if you had behavior or accountability issues. You have a future if you want it and you work for it. And while we're on the subject of high school performance, please understand that it is a massive myth that your senior year in high school doesn't impact your future. Being accepted into college does not mean that you can get a whopping case of senioritis that impacts your grades, attendance, or behavior. You see, you are responsible for turning in a copy of your final transcript to the college you will be attending. If your grades or effort drop off precipitously, your acceptance can be revoked, or you can be placed in courses below your capabilities because you didn't demonstrate those capabilities throughout your coursework. It is a total misconception that low standardized test scores will keep you out of college. Your performance in high school, college classes taken during high school, and AP and IB courses will be more important. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to score as high as possible. Lower scores might keep you from scholarship or merit aid money that would help finance college. Another misconception surrounds school choice. Public schools are not always easier to get into than private schools. You can't measure the competitive nature of admissions just based on their financial base, size, location, or reputation. Learn the annual acceptance rate for each school to which you wish to apply. Then do the work to apply and take the first step toward acceptance at any school. It is a myth that schools having a lower tuition rate will always be the least expensive college for you to attend. Scholarships and aid offered by schools can make the more expensive tuition school less expensive for you. You have to talk to the financial aid office to determine what your actual costs of attendance are. Don't make assumptions. You may have heard that you must buy all recommended textbooks from the school bookstore. This isn't true. In fact, it is suggested that you check with the school library to see if you can get access to textbooks there. You can also check with the professor to see if there are any books that you don't need to purchase. Also, there are several book buying and rental services that are not associated with your school, which might be much less expensive. If you're willing to go this route, there may be a few places on the internet 
where you could happen to stumble across a digital copy of your textbook. Many hold on to the misconception that you have to know what you want to be when you grow up before you ever set foot on campus. Nope. According to the National Association for Education Statistics, one third of college students change their major at least once. You can make decisions as you move through college, but having a general idea of what you want to study does make fiscal sense. Another myth is that since you got great grades in high school, you will kill it in college, no problem. <laughs> Maybe not. The expectations are different, the assignments are different, and the excuses for underperforming become much more based on your performance. There is no blaming your professor for not learning a topic. You are responsible for your own education. Be prepared to work for your degree. Here's another. College students can Google any answer. This is true and false. You may be able to find some answers, but in college, how you put those answers together makes a huge difference to your understanding of the subject. You will have to learn to investigate and think beyond the first answer or the most obvious answer. Myth. You don't have to attend every class in college you won't miss anything. Not true. While attendance reports won't go to your permanent record as it did in high school, you will have college instructors who do find creative ways to get you to attend class. Participation may be graded, information presented in class may not be available in your textbooks, or the professor may award points to students who show up. Sometimes professors happen to show a test answer or two to the students who do make it to class. You are paying good money to go to college. Show up. Doesn't every college student party every night? No. College has many options for students. If you want to party, I'm sure you can find other students who do. But if you don't want to party, you don't have to. While in movies and TV shows, everyone succumbs to peer pressure. In reality, if you don't want to party, people will respect that choice. One very large fallacy is the notion that college is the same for everyone. <laughs> not even close. Your experience will not be exactly like anything you have seen in movies or on TV. Some students struggle, some hold down jobs, some graduate in three years, while the average time to graduation is six years. Some students are 18 years old, while others are significantly older. Some are working, some are parents, and some are medically challenged. And in most schools, there are more female students than male students. College is what you make of it. It is a chance to learn and grow and have some fun. College is a time to face challenges and prove to yourself that you can overcome anything in your path. And the biggest misconception of them all, you are on your own. Yes and no. You are responsible for the choices that you make. You are expected to get yourself to class, clean your clothes, and live up to any commitments you make. At the same time, every college and its surrounding community offer tutoring, mental health, and medical health support, career placement and advice, and recreational opportunities. So while you are responsible for yourself, you're not on your own. There are many, many caring volunteers and professionals available to help you. All you have to do is ask. Don't let any myths or misconceptions about college inform your future. Ask questions, do some research, and make your college experience clear, honest, and all yours. No matter who you are or what you like, there is a college experience for you. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and perhaps consider subscribing. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below.